Hello everyone. Can y'all hear me? Happy Friday. So, okay, just want to make sure everything was working right. I have my microphone on. I think I, rem I remembered this time. <laughs> But happy Friday. Hi, my name is Carly Bell and I love to do all kinds of crafting, but especially machine embroidery. And I like to get together with y'all for this uh, live tutorials or chats every other Friday night that we like to call Sip and Stitch. And how y'all like my new cup? <laughs> um, so if you're new here, welcome. I'm so excited that you joined us. Hello to all of my regulars, should I say, or the squad. Hi, Norma. Hi, Monica and Delia, Rhonda. Thanks so much to Carol, Brenda, and Khan for moderating as always. How's everybody doing tonight? Ooh, and big congrats to Cindy and Star, and uh, I think Mary also. Um, that watches, uh, they won some prizes yesterday for the Sewing Machines Plus Live that Blaine Austin did. Star won a sewing machine, which is really awesome. And Cindy and Mary won some sewing mats, which I, I got myself and I love them. So y'all are gonna love them. So I was so excited for y'all yesterday. Am I frozen, Star? Ah, refresh, refresh, let me know. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. So let's see, my, my, I'm, I'm scatterbrained. So let me think about all the things I want to tell y'all. Um, loving Sublimation, if you didn't tune in two Fridays ago, um, we did um, a sip and stitch, which was new to me too, it was new to everybody. Um, but we, um, we opened and used my new sublimation printer or a printer that I'm turned into a sublimation printer because it wasn't originally sold as a sublimation printer. And I made the shirt. I think this is going to be my new uniform for Friday nights. And then a few nights ago, like two nights ago, my neighbor who also has, she's been in sub, into sublimation for like well over a year and she makes cups. Um, she came over and showed me her method of um, sublimating cups. And then me and another good friend of mine who's very good at graphic design, um, I kind of, I told her my vision of what I wanted and she created this and I love it. So I don't know if you could see it, but I'll show you in another, uh, another shot up close, but it's got embroidery machines, it's got sewing needles, spools of thread and scissors, and then a couple spots that says Carly Bell on it. But the most important, it says the squad on there. So um, I'm still working on them. Like I could see my imperfections as my first cup. They have some overlay. I got a little, the, the, the top and bottom came out fairly good, but um, I'm still working on, on my method. So as soon as I have it perfected and I'm happy with how it looks, I will put these on my website. If you don't have a sublimation printer and you just want to order a cup, I'll sub it for you and mail it to you. Um, so that's something hopefully I'll be doing soon. I got to make sure I get it going right first. And then for those of y'all who do have a sublimation printer, I am going to put what's on my shirt and what's in the middle of the cup as a free download. Just give me a week <laughs> to get my act together and I will have that for a free download um, on my website for y'all. So let's see what else I wanted to talk to y'all about. Okay, so we talked about, so yesterday Sewing Machines Plus had a live show and Angela Wolf and um, Jane, uh, uh, Jane Klaus was on there and they were talking all about what's the really big thing that is happening next week and that is the Hoop Fest virtual live event. So I'm very excited to be a part of it. Um, if you watched back in March, they did Quilt Fest and it was really nice and informative and, and I'm not a quilter, but I, I loved watching it and learned a lot and made me want to make a quilt. <laughs> so this one is, is geared towards embroidery. So it will be a showcase of probably every embroidery machine you can think of. And what what's gonna happen is the experts from that particular company will be showcasing those machines and telling you all about them and all the features they they have and how to use them a little bit. But then on top of that, 
two times each day for six days in a row, there'll be educational classes. And there's classes from uh, how to, what kind of stabilizers are and what kind to use for different projects, all about stabilizers. They'll be all about hooping, placement, um, digitizing. I'm gonna be teaching a class on applique and my good friend Amber from Bingham Bliss will be teaching a class on how to make money with embroidery. So she, she has a lot of experience having an Etsy shop and she's gonna talk about how she used her hobby and turned it into a business. So make sure you catch um, as many classes as you can throughout the week. They're all being showed on either Sewing Machines Plus Facebook page or their YouTube channel. So just go to their YouTube channel and subscribe and you'll see. And if you miss something, because you'll see the schedule on their website, it's, it's packed full of goodness. But if you're working or something's going on, you can always go back and watch. So that's the great thing about it being on YouTube. If you miss, if there's only you know one or two days that you can tune in, you can go look at the schedule and then find you know the stuff you're interested in and then rewatch it on YouTube. So but there's supposed to be a lot of good specials next week as well. I'm sure Bl and Bl Blaine's going to be giving away tons of stuff every day like he always does. So that's the awesome thing about it. So if you do tune in live, comment, like, share, all those good things. When you do that, that enters you to win all the giveaways for that particular day. And then the, we had three ladies in our Facebook group who entered the embroidery contest and we can still keep voting up until Sunday the 13th. So if you haven't done so yet, you can vote once every day. So go to um, Sewing Machines Plus. If you got my email newsletter yesterday, all the info's in the newsletter um, and gives you the link to where to go vote and the ladies' names. And then um, I also had pictures of their projects so that you can find them and, and vote for them. So that's the big thing I wanted to tell you about next week. Then another, so that's a virtual event. And um, those are really fun because it, it doesn't matter where you are and what you're doing. And you know, even if you're at work, you can pop in on your phone and, <laughs> and watch. But something that's gonna be a first for me is next month, I'm going to be at the Applique Getaway, which is an in-person embroidery conference in Dallas, Texas. And I'm super excited. I've never been to an embroidery conference before. I was actually supposed to go to one last March in Mississippi, the day the state shut down for coronavirus. So um, that did not work out. So I'm very excited that things are starting to open back up and um, thing, these kinds of events are starting to happen again. So I'll be at the Applique Getaway in July and I have information about it posted in the Facebook groups in the guide section. I made a post with info on how to register and all the classes that I registered for. And um, I'm trying to make, you know, make that be a place for us to communicate for all the people that are going so that we can get together and make sure we meet up. So that was the other big thing I wanted to tell you. Yeah, that's it. I had something too I wanted to show you, but it's in the dryer. <laughs> I washed it and it's in the dryer downstairs. We made, um, if you're, um, familiar with, I have a membership group. So it's a paid for monthly membership group. It's only $9 a month, but it's, um, it, I do it through Creative Fabrica. It's called CF Fans. And for that group, we have a special private sip and stitch every month. And we did ours last Friday and we made this really cute Disney shirt, um, a, a Minnie Mouse floral um, design that was super cute for Abigail. I'll show y'all next time but um, it's downstairs in the dryer. <laughs> but um, thanks to all the ladies that joined in and did that with me last Friday. And if you're in the membership group and missed it, you can always go back and watch the replay. And if you decide to join the membership group um, later, you can always go back and rewatch all of the tutorials that we did previously. And then you can join in for the lives for the future times. So that was all the fun stuff I think I wanted to tell you. So let's get on to what's happening tonight. So I'm sorry the chat is just rolling by and I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, remember all the things I wanted to tell y'all. But um, thanks so much to um, Carol. Um, is If you have any questions, Carol's jotting those down. And um, towards the end of tonight's show, that's when I'll, she'll spit back all those questions for me. So if you have a question, go ahead and tell Carol and she'll jot that down. And then towards the end when we're done with our project, I'll go back and answer 
all your questions if Carol hasn't already, because Carol is wonderful and she knows most of the things herself. <laughs> so, um, aw, Carol, we need to get you to Texas. We really do, we need to work this out, because you need to come. <laughs> all right, so tonight's project um, is a big thank you to the, um, the ladies um, in the CF fans group, because we did a brainstorming session of all the kinds of things that we want to see for um, Sip and Stitch, and they had the great idea to do koozies. So this is a project for tonight, and since it's close to Father's Day, I thought this would be great to do some funny or cute Father's Day sayings on the koozies, um, and these make really great gifts. Now, the, um, what was I say? These are super easy. They can be done in a four by four hoop, which means you can do it on any machine because the smallest of the machines, especially the brother machines that I'm familiar with, is the four by four hoop and then goes up from there. So I'll be using my PE770 tonight, which is the same as the PE800, it's just an older model. And we'll be using the four by four hoop to make these koozies. So we came up with the idea on Friday. So I immediately went to Amazon to to look to buy koozies. And I really wanted to buy the kind that were not sewn already. You can buy koozies that are flat. So this seam and this seam is not there. And so then it's it's already flat. You, you know, float it right on the hoop and you're good to go. Um, they have a website that someone in the group recommended to me um, and said that they purchased from there, but the shipping was not fast enough for me to get them tonight <laughs> to do them. So I ordered a pack from Amazon. So I have two links in the description for you below. I have the pack that I ordered, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna to fix the problem of needing it to be flat. And then I put the link for the recommendation I got from one of our group members of unsewn koozies um, that you can get shipped. It just, they probably take a week or longer to come in. So this is the one we're doing tonight. And I, we have this, and all the designs tonight, I didn't buy a design for tonight, and I don't have a link to a design for you tonight. What I did was just Googled funny dad sayings, and then I just made them in Embrilliance, just using a mixture of fonts that I already had in Embrilliance. So I made a few different designs. This is one I stitched out ahead of time. I have three more, so I'm gonna show you my computer in a little while, and y'all pick what design y'all want to do tonight for our project, okay? So the first thing I want, let's pick the design first. How about that, okay? So I am going to share my screen with you and I want y'all to tell me, let's see, it's gonna look weird for a second. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so here is the design that I did already. So we can do this one again if you like this one, but this was just dad bod in progress. And I'll tell you the fonts as we go through in case you really want to get the fonts that I have. So this one is a built-in in Brilliance font and it's called Block Condense. You see it here? And this is a native font, so you don't have to pick a size. You can resize it as much as you want. So I made it large, so I can't tell you. It's probably about an inch tall, I think, just judging from the grid but you can resize this to what you want. But what I did was I made the overall, let's see, I made the overall design, I think I wanted it to be no more than three by three when I measured my koozie. So that's the one I've already done. So this is the other one, but I have to measure it to see if it's gonna fit. I got this sombrero from Creative Fabrica it actually came with like a, a skull, and I'm sorry, I don't, I'll don't. i get the link for you later and I'll put it up in the description box. But this was a, like a totally different design. It had a sombrero and I wanted to say it had a skull and all kinds of other stuff. And all I did was I opened the design and I deleted everything that wasn't the sombrero, so I left that. And then I just used my fonts to do this. So this, this is that block condensed font again. And then this one is Farmhouse Lemonade. So you can get this from several different places. So we have that one. So that's, we'll say this is option number one, option number two, option number three. I actually made my dad a shirt with this a few Father's Days ago, a Father's Day ago with, um, with HTV. 
<laughs> but it says world's best farter, I mean father. And sometimes you could have like an X through it or a line through it. Um, we could also make this word and this word a different color so that they stand out a little bit more. Um, I don't know what's going on with my mouse. It's like not clicking away from things. Um, so that is option number three. And then option number four, I kind of like, um, is Yoda Best Dad. And this is Stud Muffin from Designs by Juju. And then this is a really old font, but it's a Star Wars font I got a long time ago. I want to say from like Embroidery Super Deal, one of those places. And it's not a BX font, so I had to import each letter. Um, but you could see how each letter is a different thing. So that's your four options. So option one, Dad Bot in Progress, Nacho Average Dad, World's Best Farter, I mean Father, and You the Best Dad. So I'm going to go back to the regular camera now and look at the chat and y'all tell me which one y'all like <laughs> the best. Let's see. So I'm looking at the chat. Okay, Stacy says all stitch has the the koozies and coffee wraps. Okay. That's good. Thank you, Carol, for sharing the links. All right. What what did Star say? I'm missing it. Can't say it would be awesome. Um, let's see. Liz, you're on Travelocity on hold with Travelocity. I hope it's to go to Applique Getaway. <laughs> All right. All right. Lauren votes for four, the Yoda best dad. Okay. Kathy, two. Cynthia, two. All right. Cindy likes, I think, the nacho one. Uh, Betty likes Yoda. <laughs> Nancy likes Sparta. <laughs> Yoda best. Um, okay. It's looking like Yoda has the most, and I have to, I have to say, I think that one's my favorite, too, because I bought Chris a shirt with that on it. So that would kind of go really good with his shirt to give him for Father's Day. <laughs> oh, thank you, Liz. I know I love my pegboard. We made it a, a long time ago. We still haven't quite finished it though because it's like, I'm, I am, how, how do people say you have a PhD in crafting, projects half done? I'm really good like when, we, when we're making something on the embroidery machine, I'm good about finishing it, right? Those are not my projects half done. But my projects half done are we made the, the, the pegboard and it still, it, like, it still needs to be caulked where you cover up where the nail holes were and where the seam was. When we, I don't know if you could see, no, you can't. Um, when we took my craft table, it used to be like screwed to the wall and we, we um, pulled it off and made it freestanding and on wheels so that I could put it in front of me for videos. Um, we, what, he, what did he do? He filled the holes in the wall with sheetrock, but it still needs to be painted. <laughs> Like, those are the projects that my shelf, like, there's all kinds of stuff that's, like, halfway done. <laughs> so, um, but thank you. I do love my, my pegboard a lot. Um, all right. Yes, Carol, the stud muff. I love the stud muffin font. It's super cute. And that's from Designs by Juju. Hi, Mary. Miss Winner at Sewing Machines Plus. Tell us what kind of, uh, what color sewing mat you picked. All right. Okay. Hi, Lily Marie Creations. Hi, Tina. Okay. So no questions. We're just we decided. So I think we're gonna go with the gonna we're gonna go with the Yoda one. So let me quickly save. I don't. Let me see what size I had it as. I don't know what's going on with my um. My in brilliance. I must have changed some kind of setting because I can't get my things like I want. All right. The design is three and a quarter by almost three. So I think that's perfect because I measured the koozie. And yeah, the koozie itself is about three and three quarters wide and four inches tall. So I think that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to leave it the size I made it in. 
And now I'm just going to hit Save Stitch File As. And then we'll go right, Yoda, this did. In a PES format. And of course, it's not telling me my USB stick is plugged in. Ugh. Let's see if it does now. There we go. Save. So give me just a second. I didn't save any of, to my um, USB beforehand because um, I didn't know if we might change something. All right, now I'm ejecting it. Okay. And plug it in my machine. Okay, so now we're ready to get the koozie ready. So let me show you that. All right, so here is my table. Um, so this is the one I did and, oh, I didn't even think about it tonight. I don't have it set up to show you my sewing machine. So this is it as we bought it. It comes with this little label and what we are gonna do, you're gonna need a seam ripper and you're gonna turn the koozie inside out. Let me go back so I can see you on YouTube, okay. So you can see that this, it's stitched right here and right here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to rip these seams so that it's easy to embroider. And then when we're done, I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and do that. But I did not think that far ahead and I don't have my camera set up to show you my sewing machine. <laughs> but um, it'll, it's super easy. So, you know, I'm, I'm not a seamstress. All, this, all the sewing that I do is, is um, super, super, super basic. So when I did this the other night, I tried to get the seam ripper in just one of these, like that. And then that makes kind of a hole here. And then I'm just kind of going down with it. So if you did want to have it right side out, you could still, you could still do it. So, but like once you get it started, it's super easy. It's kind of like if you did the um, Easter bunny ears with me, don't be, afraid of taking things apart, especially when it's just a straight stitch like that, you could easily put it back together. There we go. So I did that. And that's it. So you're just undoing that seam. Okay. Also, Carol, text me if my mic goes out. <laughs> I'm playing chicken with my batteries to see how long they last. Come on. I'm trying not to grab pieces of the material when I just want to get the, the one thread. Come on. It is not liking me right now. There we go. Maybe? No, not really. So, Angela says, my mother used to call me Angela the Ripper. <laughs> I cannot get this to save my life. Okay. Jeez, I'm Pete's. Okay, and you see they have a label sewed in, and I'm just gonna go right past that, and that label's gonna fall out. So, that's it. So now we have an unsewn koozie. And like I said, you can buy them like this, um, but the shipping was a little bit longer. Um, so the pack that I bought came already done, and I just sewed it back up together. So that is done. So let me pick this up. I'm using my pretty stand that Terry made me. It holds all my favorite things. 
and I love it and I keep it on my craft table all the time now. So the next thing we're going to do is use my dirty 4x4 four four hoop <laughs> and we are going to, let's see, with this 12 inch, this is my tearaway stabilizer and it's a 12 inch roll and when I cut it like this and this I could get two 4x4 four four hoops out of it so that's what I'm going to do so that I have an extra piece later for another koozie. I just do that and then I there goes my camera being crazy. All right. All right. So now we have that. So just put that here. I think it's pretty tight. Let me make sure. And then Put this on top make sure the little arrow is pointing to the arrow on the, the outer part of the hoop that you have it in the right way let's see i think i made it too tight there we go you're like cutting it close with the with the stabilizer with the way i cut it because it's like it just fits the width but it's good okay so now I take my grid, I put it in the hoop, and I use my marking pen. So this is a water and air erasable marking pen. And I make my placement marks. Okay. So now we have the koozie. So the koozie is a little too big. Uh, the koozie is too small. Well, I might make it to get the center. Yeah, I might be able to make it. I do like this. Just trying to get that center point lined up good. Make sure I have it straight, yeah. So yeah, we can do it. And just doing that. And then something else you can, you can think about. So we're only embroidering one side tonight. But if you want to do like a funny saying and then the dad's name on the other side or initial or something else that's funny, you can do both sides. You can, you can stitch one and then stitch the other. So that's something to think about. So now I'm just going to spray this. And as you can see, my hoop is really dirty. So I don't care about getting it more dirty. I am, however, going to not hold it over my table. So I'm going to spray it over the side. Another thing I used to do, and I don't have one handy, is I used to put it inside of a grocery bag. Like I'd put the hoop inside a grocery bag and then spray it so that the, the spray didn't go around. Now I've just been kind of holding it to the side. So, but you can kind of see where I sprayed it. Um, it's just a couple sprays, like two or three. Um, so that is sprayed and now it's sticky. And now I'm just holding the koozie right on top and we're just trying to get those points lined up which is fairly easy and just press it down and let's see oh I did use I forgot to get my water soluble topper let me get it okay I did use topper because I find whenever you're doing something with a satin stitch having some topper helps the edges of that the column of the satin stitch stay nice and um and crisp so you could lay that on top i could probably use half of this save this for another koozie and just do like that and i can you can either pin it or 
tape it. Tape is my best friend, so I use tape all the time. Oh, yeah, Cindy. I think you've told me that before. We can use fabric glue or even a, um, like a, a Elmer's school glue stick, right? I think you or someone else has told me that before instead of using the spray if you don't want to get spray everywhere. Okay, so now this is ready to go to the machine. So I got the camera on the machine and I think you'll be able to see the screen good. And I got a, a little stylus to help so that you're not seeing me press the buttons and my finger getting in the way of things. So let's see if I can do this. Ow, my knee. Uh, okay, so now there's a machine and I have my four by four hoop. So I'm going to slide this in and there's a, a bracket here so I have to pull this lever back and then that falls down. So with something like this, it's super easy to attach the, um, the hoop to it. Sometimes this can be a pain in the butt, but this particular project is easy. So now we have that. I have my USB stick already plugged into the machine and I'm gonna hit this USB button here. and it's saying retrieving the patterns. And so you could see my machine is older, so it does not have a color screen, which sometimes makes deciphering which design you're trying to pull up really hard. <laughs> um, my solution to this is at first, I only kept the design I was stitching on my USB drive and I would delete it after I was done. I had since been very lazy and my USB stick is full of designs. So, but I have an, a little bit of an eye now for this machine and can tell which design I'm looking for. So, I'm just gonna keep going. That's the dad bod one. Let's see, that's our, our Christmas uh, thing. <laughs> like I'm seeing all the past designs we've done. There's our hooded uh, towel that we did. <laughs> All kinds of good stuff. Let's see. There's the in the hoop bag, the pencil toppers, maker of all the things. Let's see. Are we going to be able to find our design? Oh, didn't it? It wasn't it Yoda best. Yeah, it's going to be all the way at the end because it's Yoda with a Y. So let's go faster. I have way too many designs on here. Here it is, last one, of course. So you could barely make it out, but it says you're the best dad. So we select it and then we hit this, that looks like a pocket with an arrow going up. And so that's it. So the first thing it wants to stitch is the best. And the second step is Yoda and dad, since those are the same color. So I did not think about my colors. So do y'all think it would look good with best? Like what color should we do, Yoda? and dad in black, and then like what color should we do best? Like a blue or a red? What Star Wars colors? <laughs> um, I don't think, like I have some Star Wars fabric and it's mostly like black, white, red, blue. Yeah, so I think any of those would work. Let me go get some colors. blue and I have like a deep kind of red. Let's see which one of these y'all like better. Okay, so blue, see boop, blue and red. I can't hold my hands in front of a camera very good, can I? Can you see? Nope, still blurry. There we go, blue and red. Which one do y'all vote for? For the best in the middle. And it's time for a sip. Oh, you see the cup up close? I wanted to show y'all up close. I really like it.
Okay, Allison likes blue. Delia likes red. Kimberly likes blue. Red, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. <laughs> Oh, it's Liz's birthday. Happy birthday, Liz. Hey, Alyssa. Carol, count the, count the colors for me. <laughs> Red. I'm gonna make them, Tina. I just gotta, I gotta get it right first. Cause like, let's see, can you see the back? So you see how it's the, the line, where is it at, right here? You can see it like going down. I'm not good at holding this. But I have to, I, I, fix, I made a second cup and I fixed it to where that line really wasn't there. So once um, I make sure that I do, I'm good. Then I'll make, I'll make a bunch and I'll put them for sale. All right. I, Cindy, I don't know how much the cups are going to be yet. I got to figure out how much I spent on them because <laughs> I bought a case. <laughs> I bought a big giant case of them. So I have to figure out how much I spent and then how much my materials are and how much I, I also have to figure out, like I have to buy boxes to ship them in. I have to figure all that stuff out and shipping. Once I figure out how much it costs to make them all, then I'll put a price. And I got to see, I don't know how much people sell cups for. I have no idea. Let's see. Okay. So, thanks, Tina. Yes, big happy birthday, Liz. All right, did we decide on a color? I'm trying not to get in the camera. Um, blue. Let's count blues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we got ten, ten blues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> okay. Kimberly has a tiebreaker. She got 11 blue. We're going with blue. All right. So. Blue it is. So way over here, I have my thread stand. I'm so, I don't think I have it in the shot. Um, so I'm putting my blue on the thread stand and pulling it through. Here we go. And go through the threading path. Now it's threaded. Okay. All right, so we're all threaded. So then we just, I make sure my needle's lined up right in the middle and it looks like it is. I'm going to lower the presser foot and then just hit the green start button. And so it is going to do best all at one time even though there were individual letters because they're all the same color if i would have made each letter a different color it would stop between each one but the letters are so close together that i don't think the jump stitches are um are going to be very noticeable at all like with this one it, it, it i did this one on the nq 3600 that does cut jump stitches and um it still had little tiny lines in between each of the letters because they were just so close together so um it's not a big deal to cut those when they're done or sometimes they're not even you know like noticeable to bother you 
So let me get in a little closer for you. Try not to make your car sick. But there it goes. This is the, the Star Wars font is kind of weird. It's not a satin stitch. It's like a, um, a fill stitch with almost like a ripple effect to it. So you'll, you'll be able to see it better when it's done. It's hard to see while it's stitching. But I need to find one that is a BX font so that it's easier to use. All right. Any questions while that is stitching? Y'all want to ask? Oh, Liz says her, she's 31, but her back is 93. I know how you feel. <laughs> I know how you feel, and I'm older than you. <laughs> so it feels more like 100 for me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Khan. Let's see. Only question was, can a fabric glue stick be used instead of the spray? I have not tried it myself, but I have heard people tell me that before. So I need to, to test it out myself, but I know a lot of people use Elmer's glue for sewing. Um, I think it's a glue that is not tacky enough to gum up your needle, and that's, that's your main concern. You don't want anything that is gonna gum up your needle. So that's why they do have a special basting adhesive spray. That's why we use Heat and Bond Light for um, our applique projects and not Heat and Bond Ultra, because you don't want super, adhesive-y glue gumming up your needle and that's going to mess up your project. So um, I think we definitely can and we'll have to try it out in the future because I have a bunch of it from the kids. <laughs> All right, I have a question. Why don't we have 118 thumbs up? <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Thank you, Delia. I know I do the same thing. When I'm watching um, my friends' lives, that's the first thing I do. When I get there, I hit the thumbs up. It's not often that I get to watch other people's um, lives and videos, but when I do, that's, that is the first thing I do. Ooh, eat some tacos, Femi Liz. Oh, sorry, Colleen. I usually do have my stuff to get more together, but um, no, my lives tend to go on at least about an hour and a half to two hours. I'm trying to make them to where we can go faster because I know for a lot of people it's getting late, especially on the East Coast. What's some other things I wanted to tell y'all? Mm. Oh, I know what the next sip and stitch is gonna be for once in my life. Um, I, I'm trying to be better about planning and um, I have been talking more to Carol and Carol's um, gonna hopefully be helping me soon more with like behind the scenes stuff. Um, on the blog and um, planning for the YouTube channel. So we are trying to make a, a better calendar so that we know what we're doing ahead of time. And I spoke to the people at Sweet Pea Embroidery Designs today, and we're gonna be doing a Sweet Pea project two Fridays from now. Um, and it's gonna be a 4th, of a 4th of July project. So I'll give you more details on that um, once I get the confirmation um, from them, but that's going to be a fun project. So.
so. I know, I want to hear about Wolf Guy's uh, snake. <laughs> what kind of snake? My, uh, my stepbrother has all kinds of snakes and, and creatures. Those are all his babies. All right, we're on the last letter for best. And the, I don't like the way the jump stitches are going. Let me stop this for a sec. Well, I guess it doesn't matter, but let me show you. I like to watch a lot when my stitches are happening. Um, it's probably too bright. But you see this jump stitch goes from the E to the S. And then look at this one goes from the T and it went all the way over here. So now it's going to be underneath. So, and it's clipping that little corner of the T right there. So I, whenever you are worried about something, just hit that button and the machine will stop. So now that it's paused, I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut that because that's going to be a pain to cut that little tiny corner when it's done. So, sorry if I'm making you car sick. Um, so once I clip it here at the bottom of the S, it's easy to kind of use my, my scissors and it'll just pull through the thread it's already gone under. I'm going to use my tweezers too. Tweezers. Tweezers are my favorite thing. They really help. Let's see. It's not letting me pull it through. There we go. So now I got that thread out and I'm going to hit go. Let's see. Yeah, Carol, this is, I was looking back. So the last time we used the PE770 was when we did, we used your riser and we monogrammed my tote, my tote bag, which I would use for work now all the time. I love that tote bag. And I've gotten a lot of compliments on it too, um, at work. So, um, I know it's been, it's been about a month since we used the, um, the PE770. I've been trying to make sure we rotate machines, um, since I have four different ones. <laughs> and so I just want to show y'all how each one could work. But whenever we're doing a project, I do try to make it a point to show you or to tell you how you can adapt that project to any machine. So like there's lots of times where the, the project we're doing on the Persona, um, as long as it's five, you know, smaller than five by seven, we can do that on this machine. Um, and so it's just adapting it for whatever machine. The only, the only limitation is the size, but as y'all know, most embroidery machine, uh, embroidery designs, when you buy them, they come in multiple sizes. So then you, um, you just use the size that works for you and your machine. Okay. So we have the best all done there. Um, so now I'm going to change the thread to black and I'll do Yoda and dad, and I'll probably pause the machine a couple times while it's doing that because I like to cut my jump stitches. But uh, just to point out, whenever you're changing threads on a flatbed or single needle machine, you always want to not pull the thread out going the opposite direction of the thread path. I'm gonna cut my thread right there, and I just kind of pinch it right here at the needle. I'm not trying to pull it out through the hole of the needle, through the, through the eye of the needle, but I pull it out right above so it comes out the hole and then Oh, you got to lift your presser foot or it won't do anything <laughs> and then pull it out. So um, that's what I always do when I change threads. So I'll pick my blue up and put black. Oops. Yeah, and you always, you always want your presser foot up while you're running your thread through the thread path. And um, all right, so that is done. Now I'll just lower the presser foot and it's going to stitch. Let's see, Melanie is, says she's stitching for the very first time on her Flourish too. Yay, I'm so excited for you. 
That's an awesome machine. So if you are in the market for a machine just like the Flourish 2, so that's going to be a step up from this machine. So this machine um, has a 5x7 hoop and, um, let's see, um, but it does have the option to do a repositionable or multi-positionable, let's see, I got it right here, 5x12 hoop. And I've done a few projects on this and I have a video on a baby blanket I did. And you have to have software to use this and it splits the design. But so that's this machine. And it doesn't cut jump stitches and the hoops are on a bracket system. And the speed is, the fastest speed is 650 stitches per minute. So the next step up model from this machine is you have three options actually. You have the Brother NQ1600E, the Baby Lock Flourish 2. Those machines are going to be exactly the same. One's a Brother, one's a Baby Lock. But the, the, all the features and the, even the screen and everything is the same. Um, and they, then they also, Brother also has a embroidery sewing combo machine, which is the NQ3600 and it's a Disney machine, so they have D on the end. That's the one I have. But all three of those machines have a six by 10 hoop. So you have a much bigger field. It cuts jump stitches and it has faster stitching. It goes up to 850. So you could see how fast my machine is stitching. It'll, it would stitch a little bit faster than that. So that's awesome, Melanie, that you got such a nice machine. Those have been really, really hard to find. However, Sewing Machines Plus does have the Brother NQ1600E available for pre-order right now. And from my understanding, they should be here like next week. So um, if you have been waiting for that machine, I would go ahead and pre-order it now. I have a link for it down below. Um, and get your pre-order in before they sell out. Because I know as soon as they put it for sale on their site, they're going to sell out. Okay. Ooh, Nancy, what did you put up on Etsy? Tell us about it. Yes, Melanie, the Flourish 2 and, and my, um, my 3600D, yeah, they're super quiet. Let's see. And Carol says, all of mine are proud and loud. <laughs> I, I do notice the, the 3600D is quieter. And then now I have the, the 3600D on the sewing mat as well. So that, that um, lowers the sound as well. Oh, that's awesome, Karen. My, um, my oldest daughter is eight, almost nine years old. And she's finally, I think, starting to take maybe a little bit of interest in what I do in this room. <laughs> and um, I'm hoping that I can get her. She likes to do arts and crafts, but she's never looked at sewing as something. Um, or embroidery as something. She likes to do more paper crafts and um, jewelry and do slime. They all want to do slime. Um, but I'm hoping that she is going to want to get into this um, at some point. So. Oh, Brenda has a very fancy machine. She has a Stellaire. <laughs> and she says she can hear her TV. Oh, my bobbin thread's running out. Okay, let me get a new bobbin thread. All right. So, this is good this happened. So, I can show y'all what I do when this happens. Some people just change out their bobbin um, right before they start a project, if it looks like it's getting low. I haven't found a need to do that. So it says it's low, but the, the thread and everything's still going. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit cut. So this is gonna cut the thread. Then I'm gonna lift the presser foot. And it's lucky, because it was at the end of that A anyway. We're gonna take the hoop off, open this up, and take my bobbin out so I don't know if you can see, but I'm not good at this. 
nope, I'm not good at this at all. <laughs> um, you can see like there's very little bobbin left. Okay, so I got my new pre-wound bobbin. Highly recommend having pre-wound bobbins. It took me years to finally break down and spend the money on them because I'm very cheap, but I will never, ever, ever go back. So you want the thread on the bobbin going counterclockwise. So it's hanging down on the left-hand side here. So that's how you want it, counterclockwise. We're gonna drop it in and then I'm gonna run it through the little thread path. Just follow the instructions on here. It goes around, around, and here. Now most people will immediately cut it from there. I don't want you to do that. I want you to pull a few inches. This is gonna set the tension for the bobbin so that lots of times when people are seeing white thread on top, it's either one because they have their bobbin going the wrong direction, it's going clock clockwise instead of counter, or two, they just need to pull it, set that tension first, pull it out a little bit. So that is done. We're gonna put this back. We're gonna put our hoop back on. Okay, now we don't wanna start stitching right where it left off. We wanna back up a little bit. So where's my thing? All right, let me make sure you screen is focused. So hit close and now we want to go to, so on the PE770 you don't see the button right away that I want you to, that I want to press. On the PE800 however you will. It'll look like a needle with a needle point with a plus and minus next to it. I have to hit adjust to get to that. So I'm gonna hit adjust. Now it's there, that needle point with the plus minus. Okay and so Again, with my machine, the newer models are going to be a little nicer. But mine, I only have the option to back up a single stitch, go forward a single stitch. The spools up here are to back up a whole color step or go ahead a whole color step. What I want to do is back up about 20 stitches. So I'm just going to hit this a bunch. Okay, so I think I did 15. Um, but what I want to do is I want to back up to a point before my bobbin left out so that those stitches will be overlapping and that's going to lock that in so that there shouldn't be any unraveling of the threads. So once that is done, I'll lower the presser foot and go again. So it was just fairly finishing the A on Yoda. See? Oh, and I think I have some bobbin thread. So I didn't do a very good job of setting my bobbin. Uh, let's see. No, I have a lot of bobbin threads showing. Okay, so we are going to cut, lift, and let me redo that. So I don't know if you can see, the end of the A there has some bobbin thread and right here where it was starting to do the underlay, you could see bobbin thread. So let me take my bobbin out. I did do it right, counterclockwise. I'm just gonna pull a little bit more out this time. Okay, I could feel the tension now. I could feel it that it's right before it was too loose. Okay, so now, but I want to, I got white thread right there that I don't want. So I'm gonna cut this giant jump stitch and I'm gonna go back to the bottom of that A using my stitches, my, neat, my backup stitches there. So, I'm gonna keep going back, 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 back. So if you have the PE 800, I think you have the option to go like back 10 stitches or back um, 20 or 50, something like that. Okay, so I'm back at the bottom of that A. I can see where my needle is. And I can even drop my needle down and I could see um, before where the white started on the bottom of that A. So, all right. Now I'm going to drop my presser foot and start stitching. All right, now we have all black thread. 
Probably got a little bit too much buildup right there, but that's okay. Okay, now it is stitching all black. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff that can happen with bobbins. So usually that's what it is. When the tension is wrong, it is the bobbin's fault. Something is not right with it, as in that case. done. It is stitching the D and Dad. We got a lot of jump stitches going on. When we're done with this, we're going to snip. All right. Yep. Y'all, let's see. Delia and uh, Cindy are talking about rethreading. Yeah. When you're when you're in doubt about something, rethread everything. Rethread it all. cup. <laughs> I like to have a straw. I usually drink my drinks. Um, I'm drinking these Malibu drinks that I always drink. Um, I usually just drink them out of the can with my koozie, but um, I like having a straw. <laughs> All right. Okay. Lauren said she had to step away. You assume that I floated. Yes, Lauren, I floated. Um, we used tearaway stabilizer, sprayed with adhesive, floated the koozie on top, and then I just taped some water soluble topper on top of that. <laughs> Carol with always with her witty puns. coming together. Boop. Almost done on the last letter. You see all those jump stitches we got to cut? No, it's been a while since I hooped something. Now the only thing I hoop is with the mighty hoops. <laughs> Let's see. I'm getting dance mom text messages. Um, my girls are having their dance review at the end of the month, and finally we'll have a little break from dancing. Feels like we go to dancing every day of the week. Yeah, y'all were talking about Mighty Hoops. I think the only time I, um, I, I hoop stuff now is with Mighty Hoop. <laughs> I've gotten very spoiled with them. But everything else is floating, either on regular hoops or easy frames. Um, all right, we are done. So I'm going to take this off. I've got to raise the presser foot. And I will show you how we clean this up. Okay. So we have, I like to cut the jump stitches before I pull the water soluble topper off. I find it makes it a little easier to get in there. So like the first one I see is this long one here. This one here is not bad, but this one I would get. We got this one. And if you can't, like, if it's too short for you to pull with your fingers and pull up, that's when the tweezers really come in handy. There's a long one. All right, 
So I think that's it with all the jump stitches. So now I'm going to untape the topper. And you can try and pull as much of that out as you can. Either use your fingernails or tweezers. Tweezers work really well with pulling them away too. I have to find, so the tweezers I have, I got with my Recoma machine. It came with my toolkit and I love them, but I haven't, I looked on Amazon to see if I could find some that looked similar, but I couldn't find any that were like as pointy as these. So if you have a pair of tweezers like this that are super pointy and like grasp the finest thread, please tell us where you got it from so I can put that on my supplies list for everyone. So you can try and get as much of this as you can. Whatever you can't get or you don't feel like picking out, you can then just grab a water spray bottle. I just got this in like the travel section at the store and do that. And then let's have an old, what is this? Old face cloth. And I just wipe it. Because it kind of turns gooey. I try to get as much as I can because it does turn gooey. Okay. I see, is Shana still with us? I wanted to ask her something. She's having a big um, giveaway. I was wondering if she had her giveaway yet or if people can still enter. Okay, so now I'm just pulling this away from the tearaway. So it just comes right off. So that is off and there's the back. I'm not too worried about pulling off all of these, all this tearaway or cutting any of these jump stitches. Like this is the inside, like nobody cares and your can is not going to get caught on anything when you slide it in. It should go right in, no problem. So I wouldn't worry about this. If it bothers you though, you're more than welcome to, to pick that off. Um, on the front here, we still have some placement marks and that's when I use my Tide pen. And this will get any of that remaining placement mark off of there. Okay, all right, so that is there. Um, let's see. Okay, Diana, she's telling me about her tweezers. Yeah, if you find the name brand of them, let me know. These don't have a heart or anything on them. I'm just gonna have to order some from Amazon that look like it, and when I find some that I like, then that will be what I recommend for people because I want to make sure it's good before I um, tell people to buy something. Um, okay. All right, so we are done, guys. This is it. The only last step is to sew it back up. And I don't know if y'all care about that part. I can't. I got all kinds of crap in front of my sewing machine right now. <laughs> I got my other camera. I got a bunch of stuff on it. But what you would do, it would be super simple. You would keep it inside out like this, right? And you can see where the previous line was where it sewed. So this is so simple. Take you a couple wonder clips, clip it like that, and then go to your sewing machine Make your needle go down on that point, go forward, do a back stitch, go forward, do a back stitch, stop. Then do your other side. Do your back, forward back stitch, go down, forward back stitch, stop, done. And then you turn it right side out, 
and it would be Yoda Bested. So I think that's good for tonight. I will stitch this up tomorrow when my I clean my craft room. <laughs> and then I'll show y'all a picture. But koozies! How cute is that? And you could put whatever you want on them, guys. Be creative. Just use embrilliance. Make whatever sayings you want. Um, also, be creative with pulling different designs together. So, like, I was looking for a, a small sombrero. I just went to Creative Fabrica, and I, I searched sombrero, and I, um, I found designs, but they were not what I was looking for, but it had the elements of what I was looking for. So, I downloaded the design, opened it in Brilliance, and deleted all the stuff I didn't want. So you can all, you know, always think about that when you're, when you have an idea in your head and you don't have to have digitizing software necessarily. Um, for the longest time, there were, there were things I wanted to do and I would pull different elements from different designs together, delete what I didn't want, keep what I wanted, moved it around. And then you, know, you can make your vision without necessarily having digitizing software. You know, think about that sometimes when you want to make something and say you want an applique, you want you want to make a patch, you want, you know, something. Think about other embroidery designs you have already that you bought that have some sort of applique on it. You can go and delete everything else and just keep that applique element of your, your three stitches, your placement, tack down, and final stitch. So those are all things to keep in mind when, when doing projects where, especially when you're doing small projects like these and, um, like uh, in my fans group next week, y'all are gonna get the um, your free embroidery design for the month uh, is a little tiny, um, it's a wedding set. It's a little tiny engagement ring and a little tiny bow tie. When looking for tiny things, sometimes it's really hard. You could find designs you want, like, okay, I had, you know, I wanted to do a wedding present. I wanted to have to have those to stitch on a handkerchief, but everything I found was, in a four by four size and I wanted something tiny. So then I had to digitize it myself. But um, when you have an idea in your head, you might find those tiny elements sometimes in other designs. So that's when you can pull them through, um, delete what you don't want and keep what you want. So those are all fun things and that's what makes them brilliant so great because you can do all of that on there. So let's see, okay, I'm checking the chat now. So. We are pretty much done. Are there any other questions y'all wanted to ask tonight? Okay. Um, Cindy said, I might have to use a certain foot to get that to sew up. I have the walking foot on my sewing machine and I never change it. <laughs> I keep the walking foot on there for everything. So I don't know if that helps. But um, like I said, I'm not a big seamstress. I want to be. I watch other people and I'm like, oh, I want to make that. I want to make that. I want to make all the things. Um, but I have too many things I need to make. And I never get around to all of them. <laughs> but the walking foot has been very useful for me with any, almost any project. And I do very simple things on my sewing machine. And that works well. Um, okay. Okay. Yay, Denny said she started hers both um, both sides. Now she just needs to sew it back together. Woo! Thanks, Alyssa. Thank you, Delia. Okay, what's up, Diana? You have a question? And Kathy, you have a question. Does anyone know if you can use the sewing mats on the riser? You... Can. So you want to put the sewing mat under the riser? Definitely. Yeah. Um, if you want to put the sewing mat on top of the riser, the, so the sewing mats from Sewing Machines Plus would be too big. Because the riser, the way Carol makes the riser, it is like, fits like a glove on the machine. Like it is perfectly tailored to it. So it's not like a huge rectangle. Um, and, and she made it that way specifically so that you can get the most function out of it. Because if your riser's too big, if you're trying to put, you know, a small adult shirt on there, the riser's going to be, you know, too wide for the shirt to go on, but the machine is not. 
So when Carol came up with her design for that riser, she did it perfectly. And so that, that riser hugs the machine. It's just a tiny bit bigger um, so that it supports it well, but that you can fit, you know, it's going to allow you to fit what would be the, the smallest thing that the machine is capable of using with the riser to go around the embroidery arm. That's the important part. And if you're wondering what a riser is and what I'm talking about, we did a sip and stitch a few weeks ago. Um, was it in April or May? And I show you all of what the riser is, how it works, how you can use it. And we did a project um, monogramming a tote bag on it. So you can check that out on my channel. All right, let's see. Thank you, Tina. Okay. Could you use Bossel foam to make your own koozie. I don't know what kind of foam that is, but yes, these are so easy. If you can find the neat, I call it like neoprene. Um, if you can find, I like this one. Okay. So let me tell you about the koozies too. Um, you could definitely make these. All you need is a pattern to cut it out. And then I wouldn't be surprised if we can find a cut pattern somewhere and you could probably cut it with your silhouette or Cricut with the rotary blade probably cut that out nice that would be fun we can make our own yeah we definitely can <laughs> um, so yeah if you buy the fabric get the pattern this would be super easy to make yourself um, but I wanted to tell you about these koozies okay so I bought these off of Amazon and it's I read that somewhere in the description they're also work for sublimation so I sublimated some however I don't think I would recommend them for sublimation and I'm gonna tell you why um, they do take the color well so this design, I don't know if you can see, I got it off of Creative Fabrica. Um, I just looked up Father's Day graphics and I think this is meant to be on a shirt, but I just reduced the size and I printed it so that it would fit on the koozie. But it says, I'm not a regular dad, I'm a cool dad. <laughs> so I sublimated that. And then I gotta tell you all about my husband. Um, it's, it's kind of, when you have a wife that you can show her a picture of anything, just almost not sewing stuff, but you know, anything that's vinyl, now sublimation, embroidery, show me a picture of something. I can make it, right? He saw a picture of this, and this is what he wanted me to make him. He wanted a koozie that said this. I don't know how well you can see it, but it says, I heart peeing outside. <laughs> he saw this on Facebook, in somebody's Facebook picture, and he screenshotted it and sent it to me. Can you make me this? I'm like, oh my God. So I made it for him. Um, and I posted it on my, my personal Facebook page and everybody got a kick out of it. <laughs> and they all want one now. But I, I have to say, I'm not happy with these koozies with sublimation. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but they like, once the heat, once you push them down with the heat press, um, they really flattened out and they lost like the foam that was, that you can tell is nice and squishy on the one we embroidered, like it's still squishy. Now it's all flat because it's it's almost like the heat took the fluffiness of the foam away. So like I don't know how good this would work as keeping your 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 drink cool because I feel like it lost some of its insulation by flattening it. I don't know, but this koozie I got from All Stitched Up by Angela. This was um, I made this one of the first the first night I put the the printer together, and this is a different kind of fabric. This feels like neoprene. This feels like like when you wear like a wetsuit, that's what it feels like. These feel like that on the outside, but the inside is like foam and the foam flattened. This is not flattening. So I heat pressed this and this stayed nice and it's still like very squishy and I feel like it would still keep your drink insulated. So I need to find either this fabric to make some uh, koozies myself or find, go back to All Stitched Up by Angela and buy a handful of these and that's what I would sublimate koozies with. So I wanted to tell you all about that. All right. Um, let's see. Heartstring wants to know about stitching back up. Concern that it would be like rubber to sew. No, I, I sewed this one with no problem. No problem whatsoever. The, the needle, the, just like the embroidery needle is able to go through it nicely, the sewing needle is able to go through it nicely. But that like Carol said, I do, the walking foot is probably helping too. Okay. Ooh. Um, all right. 
Diana says, speaking of Embrilliance, when a project is complete and I reload it back on Embrilliance, I notice that I am not able to see the font information. Is there where to see this info again? That might be because you saved it as a PES file and when you open it back up, after you save a PES file, if you had like different elements like fonts and stuff, it condenses it all to one design and it might not give you the font information. You're not going to be able to go and edit the font anymore. You need to save it as a working file and that's going to be a .be file. So you have a few options. You, you can save it as a working file and keep that in a spot. You can also save it as a working and stitch file. You'll see all these options when you hit file at the top of the computer screen or you could save as a stitch file and that's when you choose PES, DST, um, whatever um, format that goes with your embroidery machine. So that should solve your problem, Diana. Um, oh, Melanie says, uh, the koozie Miss Harold sews like butter, like butter. <laughs> she spelled it just like I pronounced it. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. C says you can find the, so it's called Bossel Foam. I didn't know that. You can find it on Walmart on a roll. Yay. We need to go check that out. All right. So I see where it is. DOUX, can you use any graphic to sublimate? Pretty much. Pretty much. You just have to have some sort of software to open it up in. So I've been using, I've only printed from Adobe, Adobe Illustrator so far. I know a lot of people print from Silhouette software. There's something though, and this is way above my head. Um, when I when I watch, so I buy my sublimation ink from Cosmos Ink, and they have a lot of great video tutorials. And he talks all about um, a lot about color something color profiles profiles for your computer and that's where like you what you see on your computer it might not print out visually and that's where you want your color I already lost the word um, profile <laughs> to be a certain way and in Illustrator and in Photoshop and in there's another program a lot of people use I can't remember what the name of it is um, maybe so some of my sublimation people would know um, and it's a free program um, there's I think Inkscape those you can upload color profiles and so when you buy Cosmos Inc they give you a color profile to upload to your computer Silhouette Studio software does not allow you to use a color profile so the colors might not match perfectly to what um, you see on your screen to what you're printing. So that's the only thing I've heard about that, but I think a lot of people still use Silhouette software. You just need some kind of software to open it. You can buy PNG um, files from anywhere, just about. I love Creative Fabrica, but um, they also have tons of other websites, even, you know, and Etsy. Uh, they'll, even if they don't market it as a sublimation image, as long as it's a PNG, you can print it out. Um, and it will... Um, and then you can sub it. You just need to have it mirror imaged. So that is is pretty much it. So I would say almost, yeah, any graphic. Okay, I'm looking back. Oh, Sherry, <laughs> your husband likes my koozie. <laughs> Okay, good. I'm glad that helped you, Melanie, with the um, the BE file. All right. Lightroom, Delia? I think so. Hi, Annette. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm glad this um, project went well. I'm sorry I didn't, um, wasn't thinking ahead enough to have it um, ready to sew y'all, sew, show y'all me sewing it up <laughs> but y'all get the idea um it's pretty straightforward from this point out and um and it, when i do get my table cleared where my sewing machine is i might put my phone on it and video it and then i'll, I'll put it in the facebook group if you want to see me sewing it up but i hope y'all enjoy tonight's project this is fun for father's day presents um and then for you know for anything graduation presents um anything. Yeah, everybody needs a koozie. So, um, we, got, we need sip and stitch squad koozies too. <laughs> 
So I hope y'all enjoyed tonight's project. Um, if you did, please give the video a thumbs up, which I appreciate all of y'all that already did. Um, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, um, please do. I like to do lives every other Friday night and I'm trying to be better about doing more videos. I know I keep saying that. Carol's, Carol's gonna get me on track. That's, that's, that's what I'm banking on, <laughs> at least, Carol. <laughs> um, and I wanted to tell y'all, so two weeks from now, let me check, because I, I, it never fails. I'm talking to y'all and I say the wrong date. I did that, I think in, it, we were in May and I said April, like April something, we were in May. Okay, Friday, June 25th, 2021 <laughs> saying it all um we will have an in the, in the hoop project with a design from sweet pea embroidery and carol introduced me to this website and they have gorgeous in the hoop projects um, and it's going to be a fourth of july themed project and i'm going to test stitch two of them and pick which one i like and which one um, will be easiest to show y'all on camera. Um, I think both of them are a multi-step project, but uh, we're gonna go over all the things you need for the one, and then we'll talk about how you're gonna, it's gonna be multiple hoopings, but one of them is a flag or wall hanging, and one is like bunting or a banner. So um, that's gonna be a super fun project, and that's gonna be Friday, June 25th. <laughs> <laughs> um, for our next sip and stitch and I can also tell you for July July is gonna be a slow month just to warn you ahead of time July is a vacation month we're gonna we're gonna take a vacation in July but we will still have two sip and stitches um, one will be here in my craft room but will be more of a sip and chat so you can come with all your questions about anything and then the second one's going to be super fun because we will be live at the applique getaway and I'll be with all my my sip and stitch squad that comes with me and we're going to go live from the show itself and we'll go walk around and show y'all all the things that we're seeing. So that's going to be super fun for July. So thank you so much everyone. Um, few other things let's see if you're not already a part of the Facebook group please come join us we have a link down below and please consider becoming a member of my fans my CF fans group we're having a lot of fun in there uh, we're gonna have we will have a project for July so if you are missing out on doing a project here um, on YouTube for July come join the fans group we're gonna do one there so um, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you so, so much. And I will see y'all next time, Friday, July 25th. <laughs> all right, everyone take care. Have a good weekend and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and husbands and brothers um, for, all of our, uh, for all of our members. So thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>